We got a bunch of new Pokemon in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. In fact, we have seen 120 Pokemon in Gen 9 to this point. And while we will probably get a few more in upcoming games over the next year or two of this generation, it feels like we probably have seen all the Paldea Pokemon that we're gonna get from Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, now that the epilogue of the games has been released. So, as such, I am going to be covering one fact about every every Paldea Pokemon over the next week, making for 120 facts in total. I'll be covering half of the Pokemon in this video, and the other half in a part 2 to this video, which will be going live a week after this video does. I've done a lot of digging to find some cool facts about all the Paldea Pokemon, so with that said, let's go ahead and get into it. So the first Mon of this video isn't actually from Paldea, because it is Fulcachi, the channel mascot from my upcoming monster taming video game, Histrobi Chronicles. First off, a huge thank you to everyone who grabbed a plush and a card recently of this little fella. Your support means so much, and while the card is no longer available, you can still get the plush and all of the adorable squishiness that comes with it. You can grab one with the link below at histrobyshop.com, and it truly does help to take everything I do with this channel to the next level. It helps me to keep making videos, it allows me to do cool projects like Histroby Chronicles and my other Fakemon projects, and it allows me to produce awesome and fun products just like this. I have a ton of amazing stuff planned for the channel this year, and if you would like to help make it happen, you can pick up one of these little guys at histrobyshop.com. Again, that link is in the description below. He's soft, squishy, and really well made, so it's also an excellent addition to any plush collection as well. So be sure to check that out with the link below, and thank you guys as always for your amazing support. Starting with Sprigatito, it learns some moves by level up that tease its evolution into Meowskarada. It learns Bite at level 7 and Home Claws at level 10, both of which are dark type just like Meowskarada, and then it learns Magical Leaf at level 13, which falls in line with the Magician theme of Meowskarada as well. For my fact on Florigato, it's one that is kind of attributed to its line as a whole, but a possible inspiration for the magician theme of these Pokemon upon reaching their final evolution might be due to their inspiration, the Iberian Lynx, being an endangered species, as they are unfortunately disappearing in much the same way that magicians often perform disappearing acts. I can't technically confirm this directly as an official fact, but I thought it was a really interesting and noteworthy possible connection for these Pokemon nevertheless. The Magician Pokemon itself, Meowskarada, has the highest speed stat of any starter Pokemon, excluding special forms of them like Mega Sceptile or Ash Greninja. This is also likely inspired by its magician origins, and more specifically, the very quick sleight of hand that magicians often employ. Meanwhile, Fuecoco also learns a move that teases its final evolution, as it learns Round at level 7, which is a singing-based move that obviously alludes to the singing theme of its final evolution, Skeledurge. Speaking of music-based moves, Crocolore was unable to learn the move Encore by TM, even though Fuecoco and Skeledurge could, until almost a year after Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out, when the Teal Mask DLC was released and the apparent error was finally fixed. And on the note about the music inspiration, one of the coolest parts about Skeledurge's design is that its head and snout are actually meant to resemble the runway of a stage that you would typically see at a big concert. This is cemented by the fact that the little flame bird that accompanies Skeledurge is at the end of the runway like a singer at a concert would often be. Moving on to Quaxley, though, it is actually not from the Paldea region, as its Scarlet Pokedex entry says that this Pokemon migrated to Paldea from distant lands long ago. 
While the Quaxley family ultimately follow a theme of dancing, Quaxwell also resembles a synchronized swimmer, with its feathers resembling a swim cap and swim suit. This is likely due to the fact that synchronized swimming was once also known as water ballet. Going along with this, Quackwaval is clearly based on a dancer because it is constantly seen dancing in the games. Despite this, however, Quackwaval can only learn three of the 12 dancing moves that currently exist, and can only learn two of them by level up. For our boy LeChonk, it gets to say that it has something unique to its name, as it is the only Pokemon currently with a base stat total of 254. Its evolution Oinkalone is also unique as well, as it is the only Pokemon that has a signature ability for only one of its genders, as its ability Lingering Aroma is exclusive to male Oinkalone. Tarantula, meanwhile, is a cute little spider Pokemon whose body is covered by a big ball of yarn, but it is actually possible to see what Tarantula looks like underneath the yarn as well, as it is able to shoot the yarn off its body, and fittingly enough, it reveals that its body resembles a spool of yarn. Its evolution Spidops is another Pokemon with a unique base stat total, as it's currently the only Pokemon with a base stat total of 404. This may or may not have additional meaning as well, since 404 is the number for a famous error code on the internet, which is also known as the World Wide Web. When it comes to Nimble, despite being themed around jumping and kicking, neither Nimble nor its evolution can learn the move High Jump Kick. Nimble's evolution Low Kicks actually has an additional form that we don't have access to in the games. Both of its Pokedex entries in Scarlet and Violet mention its Showdown mode, where it stands on its pair of folded up legs, but despite the fact that we also see this form in its Pokedex art as well, it is not a form that is accessible or usable in battle. Pommy is known as Pomo in Japanese, which despite a slightly different English spelling, is the same name as its evolution in English. Likewise, Pomo is known as Pomot in Japanese, which other than the slightly different English spelling once again, is the same name as its evolution in English as well. Upon evolving into Pomot, Pomot is able to learn a new move known as Revival Blessing that can revive one of your fainted Pokemon. This is based on the fact that Pomot is partially inspired by defibrillators, which is also why it has pads on its palms that it can discharge electricity from, similar to a defibrillator. Moving along though, Tandemouse is currently the only Pokemon who can skip the evolution animation when evolving, as when it reaches level 25 in a battle, in a battle it did not actually battle in, it will simply evolve without the evolution sequence occurring. Tandemouse and its evolution Mousehold also have a signature move known as Population Bomb, and while it's not really super applicable at the current time since no other Pokemon can currently learn this move other than these two, Population Bomb is able to be increased in power by the ability Sharpness, which powers up slicing moves. This is noteworthy since it doesn't exactly seem like it makes much sense, but it's all cleared up when looking at the Japanese name for the move, which can be translated as Mouse Cut. Fido's up next, and it may have an interesting connection with the other two Paldean dog Pokemon, Grievard and Mastiff. It's possible that they may all be based on the famous nursery rhyme Rub-a-Dub-Dub, -dub, which mentions a butcher, a baker, and a candlestick maker, which equate quite perfectly to these Pokemon, with Fido being the baker, Grievard the candlestick maker, and Mastiff with its sharp teeth, the butcher. The design of Fido, as well as its evolution Doxbun, are also partially based on a pun, as they've also seemingly been designed around the term 
purebred, which denotes a species of dog that doesn't have other species of dogs mixed within it. And it also just sounds like the phrase pure bread, as in the bread you eat, which is what these Pokemon are meant to be made out of. Now we're going to look at Smoliv, and despite the Smoliv family having a signature move, Terrain Pulse, and being the only Pokemon who can learn this move by level up, the move itself was actually introduced before they were, as it actually made its debut in Generation 8. A really cool thing about Dolive, meanwhile, is that its dex entries actually explain why its shiny form exists and why it's so rare. The dex entries say, Dolive shares its tasty, fresh-scented oil with others. This species has coexisted with humans since times long gone. And it basks in the sun to its heart's content until the fruits on its head ripen. After that, Dolive departs from human settlements and goes on a journey. Dolive's shiny features black olives on its head instead of green olives, which are the riper versions that its dex entry refers to. So, Dolive can essentially become shiny Dolive once their olives ripen to a certain point, and then they are so rare because they depart from human settlements at that point. We don't really get to get a whole lot of specific lore on shiny Pokemon like this, so having this kind of explanation is pretty cool in my opinion. The dex entries of Dolov's evolution, Arbalova, talk about how it is calm and passionate. This personality trait is possibly derived from the olive branch, which is a famous symbol and phrase that represents peace. Squawkabilly is based on a monk parakeet, which is where it gets its different colored forms. It's also based on a rockabilly, as its name implies, and more specifically, resembles Elvis just a little bit. These two inspirations come together quite well, actually, since monk parakeets are an invasive species, particularly in Spain, and Elvis was someone who helped bring about the rise of rock and roll, which was seen at the time to be invading pop culture in much the same way. Moving on though, Nackley and its family all get their names in part from the chemical symbol for salt, which is what they're all based on. Salt's chemical symbol is N-A-C-L, which all of these Pokemon have in their names. Now, Nacklestack is a Pokemon that I don't really like personally, but even I have to admit that it seems pretty inspired, even right down to its eyeballs, whose glowing nature seems to resemble Himalayan salt lamps. Additionally, these Pokemon also take inspiration from Strata, which are the different layers of sediment that sit next to each other and can be visibly distinguished from one another as well. And while this next part is mostly just coincidental, I thought it was kind of interesting that the Wikipedia page for Strata features an example of it from Salta, Argentina. So, who knows, maybe Game Freak were consulting Wikipedia when designing these Pokemon. Garganicol, as well as the rest of its line, have a signature ability known as Purifying Salt. Part of this ability's effect is that it halves the damage taken from ghost-type moves, which might seem a bit odd, but this effect is actually pulled straight out of Japanese culture, where salt is considered to be cleansing and purifying, and in particular is thought to ward off evil spirits. For Charcadet, Armor Rouge, and Cerulege, I have a 3-in-1 fact. And that is, despite these Pokemon's visual resemblance to Mega Man characters, which everyone took note of when they were first revealed, they were not designed by designer Hitoshi Ariga, who designed multiple Pokemon for Scarlet and Violet and is known for his interest in Mega Man, as he has worked on numerous things for the Mega Man franchise in the past. Now we move on to Tadbulb, and aside from being adorable, it is also the only Pokemon currently with a base stat total of 272. Its evolution Bellabolt, despite being a pure electric type, can learn a couple of poison type moves. 
This likely comes from one of its inspirations, the Kuyaba Dwarf Frog, who has false eyes just like Bellabolt and can emit a poisonous secretion when it is threatened. Wattrell's Violet Pokedex entry mentions how its nests are a delicacy, which may sound a bit odd, but it's actually based on a real thing. Believe it or not, there are what are known as edible bird's nests that are legitimately eaten by people, largely in Asia. According to Wikipedia, they are made from the solidified saliva of various birds known as swiftlets, which makes the idea of eating them all the more odd in my personal opinion, but what's more is that they are also one of the most expensive animal-derived products that are consumed by people, with prices apparently around $4,300 a pound connecting Wattrell to one of the more wild, real-world facts of all time. Kilowattrell, meanwhile, doesn't have something that's quite as interesting to its name, as, to be honest, despite all the digging that I did, the most interesting thing that I could find out about this Pokémon is that it and Wattrell currently have their own signature ability that no other Pokémon has, which is Wind Power. Despite being a pretty solid Pokémon, there sadly wasn't really much else to be had in the trivia department for this Pokémon at this time. With that said, let's go ahead and move on to Mastiff, though. Mastiff's abilities pay special attention to this Pokémon's inspirations and mannerisms, as it can have either Intimidate or Runaway as an ability, which show its desire to be scary, but its tendency to also be anxious or even scared itself, and then its hidden ability, Stakeout, also alludes to its Mafia origins, as the only Pokémon currently with this ability are ones that are inspired either by different types of criminals, or by different kinds of law enforcement. Its evolution Mabostiff, upon evolving, learns a new move known as Comeuppance. While essentially its signature move, there are a couple other Pokémon who can also learn it. However, they, interestingly enough, all have Mafia origins or Mafia ties, as the other Pokémon who can also learn this move are Haunchcrow, who goes without saying, and Houndour and Houndoom, who are partially based around Dobermans, who are known to be, and stereotypically seen as, a dog that is owned by the Mafia, due to their aggressiveness and their role as guard dogs. Moving on, though, it's possible that Schrudel's design, particularly its body shape, was inspired by a popular piece of graffiti art known as Kilroy Was Here, as the art does indeed resemble the shape of Schrudel, and this Pokémon, as well as its evolution, are, of course, based around graffiti. You may think it's odd, however, that Shrudel, who is naturally based around a shrew, would evolve into a monkey-esque Pokémon like Grafii. Well, no decision in Pokémon is made without its research, as this actually likely comes from the fact that the Tree Shrew is one of the closest living relatives of primates, like the Eye-Eye that Grafii is based on. One of my favorite Paldea boys, Bramblin, has a super cool fact about him as well, as his cry is actually similar to the beginning of the theme from The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, a classic western film, which goes along with the trope of tumbleweeds rolling through abandoned towns in western movies. And my fact for Bramblegast is a follow-up to that, because the reason why these Pokémon are in Paldea, despite evoking feelings of the Wild West, is because of the Tabernus Desert in Spain, which is famously known for being a European stand-in for the Wild West of North America, and is where many Western movies have been filmed, including The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. 
Now it's time for Toad School, and both Toad School and Toad Scruel are referred to within the data of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet as Oka Kingu and Oka Gyaradosu, which implies that there were once plans for convergent forms of Magikarp and Gyarados that these two Pokemon, Toad School and Toad Scruel, ultimately replaced instead. Toad Scruel and its pre-evolution are based around mushrooms, which continues a trend that may or may not be intentional, but it's still interesting, of mushroom-based Pokemon being introduced in odd-numbered generations. We've had the Paris line in Gen 1, the Shroomish line in Gen 3, the Fungus line in Gen 5, the Moralo line in Gen 7, and now the Toad Scruel line in Gen 9. I guess I can see now why they had to scrap the Convergent Magikarp and Gyarados, because they had to make sure they adhered to the very important mushroom theme in the odd-numbered generations. Cloth's blue shiny coloration is likely inspired by blue lobsters, who pop up on rare occasions similar to shinies and are often referred to as shiny themselves when stories about them are posted on social media. Next up is Capsicid, and it is currently the only grass-type Pokemon that evolves with the use of a Firestone. Its evolution, Scovillain, is funny, because it is the very first grass and fire type Pokemon, which the entire Pokemon community eagerly awaited for over 25 years, and now it has become the Pokemon who has owned a unique type combination for the shortest amount of time, since another grass fire type in the form of Hearth Flame Mask Ogre Pond was introduced less than a year later with the release of the Teal Mask DLC. Whoever designed Relor, meanwhile, is about as mature as you would expect someone to be when designing a Pokemon based on a dung beetle, because it actually has a poop-shaped pattern that can be partially seen on its stomach. And speaking of partially seeing something, its evolution Rabska is mentioned in its dex entries to have an infant sleeping inside the ball that it carries. And this infant can actually be seen in the games, and it has a design that is unique from Rabska or its pre-evolution Relor, essentially making this infant an unofficial Relor pre-evolution. I've got another multiple facts in one here for Flittle and Espathra, which funnily enough also involves Hitoshi Ariga. While he is on record as the designer of Espathra, he apparently did not design Flittle, which is pretty interesting. On top of that interesting distinction, he has also designed some pretty awesome and intense Pokemon on top of this, like Ogre Pawn, Necrozma, and Ultra Necrozma, the latter two of which he helped to design. I don't know about you, but to me it's pretty interesting to think about how a Pokemon like Espathra and Ultra Necrozma were essentially designed by the same person. Meanwhile, the shiny colors of the Tinkatink family simply change their hammers to a rust color, implying that their hammers are in fact rusted and thus have had them for a while. This supports the idea presented by Dolov that was mentioned earlier, that at least some shiny Pokémon become that way because they're simply versions of their species who haven't been seen or caught by a trainer in a long enough time, to where their appearance can begin to change for whatever reason, resulting in the shiny form. Which is a pretty interesting idea and cool piece of potential shiny Pokémon lore. Tinkatink's evolution, Tinkatuff, as well as the rest of this evolutionary line, were designed by Megumi Mizutani, who also designed other notable Pokémon like Mimikyu and the Hisuian Growlithe family. The final evolution of these two, Tinkaton, is partially based on the media trope of little girls with big hammers, or just big weapons in general. And yes, that is an actual media trope as evidenced by similar characters like Amy Rose or Harley Quinn. 
Now we're on to Wiglet, and Wiglet has the honor of having the lowest HP stat of all Water-type Pokémon, with an HP stat of just 10. Perhaps unsurprising, but still interesting, Wugtrio is exactly three times the weight of Wiglet. Let's move on to Bombardier, though, because what's interesting about Bombardier is that it is capable of receiving a quote-unquote stab bonus on up to six different types of moves at once. Two come from the actual stab bonuses that it gets for its flying and dark types, the third is a standard 50% boost from its ability Rocky Payload, the fourth is the additional stab that it can get for Terastalizing, the fifth is if it happened to be battling while the ability Steely Spirit is in play, and the sixth would be if it was either rainy or sunny on the battlefield. Next up, Finizen and its evolution Palafin in its zero form have identical cries. This obviously goes along with Palafin's inspiration, but this would make these two Pokemon some of the only Pokemon to ever share the exact same cry. Palafin evolves from Finizen at level 38, and this may be a reference to the year 1938 which is the year when Superman debuted as a character, which Palafin obviously takes some inspiration from. And for our last evolutionary line of this first part of the video, we have Varum and Revavroom. For Varum, it has a pretty ingenious name, as it comes from Varum, the onomatopoeia for the sound that a car makes, and Va, which translates to Go in Spanish, which connects to both the car inspiration as well as the Spanish-inspired Paldea region. Meanwhile, Revivroom is very thematically inclined as well, as it may be going so far as to reference the concept of Road Rage within its move pool. It can learn moves like Taunt, Torment, and Parting Shot, all of which could tie very fittingly into a Road Rage reference, and in addition, it can also learn other moves that references its car theme as well, like Poison Gas, Smog, Screech, and Spin Out. And that was all the Pokemon for part number one. Leave a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below, and tune in next week as I will have facts for the rest of the Paldea Pokemon in part number two. Be sure to subscribe as well if you haven't for more content, and with that said, I'll be back with another new video very soon. Until then, as always, thanks so much for watching this one, I really appreciate it, and I will smell you guys later.